Hi everyone, welcome back to the Lumber Mill Devlog. In this video, I finally returned to the game's factory builder mechanics. For those that are new here, Lumber Mill is a game I'm developing in Unity 2D about building and managing your own mills in an island archipelago. As with all factory builders, conveyor belts are probably the most important building in the game. In Lumber Mill, they've gone through a fair number of iterations. In the first weeks of the project, I got this extremely naive version working. Items moved in steps and needed spaces between them to function. A few months later, I rewrote them again to support more complex machines. This time, items still moved in steps, but at least didn't need a space between them to move. I left it like that for a year or so before deciding it wasn't really up to standard and rewriting them again, this time solving the step-by-step -step movement. This was much better, but still had its issues. I also left a few major holes in the system in the hope I'd come up with a solution later. I'm sure a lot of you watching will definitely agree that is rarely a good idea. The time has come, of course, to fix those problems. It took a few weeks of hard work, but they now look like this. Conveyor belts form chains, represented in the game's back end with a single start and end point. In debug mode, chains are highlighted with a coloured debug line, which you can see here. Machines with more than one input or output connect chains together, with internal logic to coordinate between the chains dependent on the machine. Here you can see a machine with two different chains exiting and a single chain entering. Items move independently along conveyor belts as long as the space between themselves and the next item is greater than a threshold. That means items not only move smoothly, but can stack up nice and close on belts when reaching a bottleneck. Big thanks to the Factorio blog for that innovation. Obviously, the items here have placeholder art with the item colour representing what chain they're on. I've started a new technical blog for the game with a write-up of the conveyor belts which I've linked in the description, but that's the new conveyor system in a nutshell. Having made these changes to allow multiple items per conveyor belt, I realised there was an issue with the new ID tool which is used to display items and their properties, as it relied on a single item being on a conveyor belt at any one time. I very rarely use colliders in Lumber Mill, but in this case, in order to accurately identify items, I needed to add colliders to items for mouse events. So I added a polygon collider to the item prefab and for testing, created an outline for the collider in the Unity sprite editor based on the placeholder sprite. Thanks to this super helpful post on the Unity forums, I could then take that outline and add it to the collider. So item colliders should always match the actual shape of the item sprite. What this all means is once I've added some code for mouse events on the items, the ID tool now gives information about specific items only when you mouse over the item itself. With all that necessary maintenance work done, I was finally able to start work on some new machines. The debarker is probably the most basic machine, so I decided that would be a good place to start. Using the old amberizer machine and some basic placeholder art, I put together a prefab to allow the player to build the debarker. Once I've added it to the game's tech tree, it shows up in the game's build menu and makes connections with conveyor belts as it's meant to. As I've thankfully already done most of the groundwork for machines now, the debarker's logic is actually super simple. It all fits into a single return statement. To finish that off, the debarker just needed to know the log property for checking the item is valid and the bark property so it knows what to remove. The finished result for the debarker was this, logs enter with bark and exit without. Next up on the machine to-do list was the path switcher. Anything that enters on the left, exits on the right and vice versa. I'm going to be making a lot of this placeholder art as I'd like to make sure the factory builder mechanics are all sound before committing to any final designs. I created a prefab for the switcher and a C-sharp class. I then set up that class in Unity before adding the machine to the tech tree. For every new machine I add to the game, I also have to add localized text for the build menu and tech tree, which I'm doing here. After spending a bit of time on the machine logic, I got the switcher machine working well. This will be super useful when you want to cross two conveyor belt paths over one another. Next, a very old machine returns to the game, the splitter. This was originally implemented using an early version of the factory system a few months into development and so is definitely not compatible anymore. This time I'm also changing the layout and giving the player a bit more control. This machine splits an incoming stream of items left and right. Originally, it would split one left to one right. However, here I'm putting together a control panel component that the player can use to set whatever ratio of left to right they want. I also designed some new icons to be used by the component. 
In order for the component to work, I created a C-sharp class for it and linked up mouse events for all the different buttons involved. After a bit of work on the machine logic, here's the splitter. It'll default to 1 to 1, but you can set the split ratio to whatever you want within reasonable limits. Next up, saws get their first big update. I wanted there to be more variety in items and typically lumber is categorised based on its width and thickness. For example, a 4x2 piece of lumber is 4 inches wide and 2 inches thick. So that's how things will be done in lumber mill. That meant adding a new dimension property to the templates for pine and maple logs. This is a special property which can have values assigned to it. In this case, the default dimensions are 8x8. Now when hovering over these logs, you can see the new property is showing in pink as 8x8. So with that setup done, I created some more placeholder art for the saw. Just using the debark as placeholder, set up the prefab as usual and also designed a drop down component for control panels. This will allow the player to configure their saw to either slice in half along the width dimension or the thickness dimension. This is just the basic saw and I've got some other more fancy ones planned for later in the game. With that all done, here's the saw working. Every log that enters is cut in half along the selected dimension, which means you get two items exiting the machine one after the other. Both of these items are identical and the dimensions are halved correctly. At around this point, I finally got to have a bit of a holiday. I went to Norfolk in the east of England, which is known for its lakes, reed beds and thatched buildings. Obviously, being an English holiday, there had to be a bit of rain, but otherwise it was super nice to relax for a few days. Now it's been quite a long time since I added loans to the game, which is before I redesigned all the game's interfaces and colours. I'd put off bringing the old loans interface up to date since then, but I decided now was as good a time as any to do it. It took quite a bit longer than I anticipated, but I'm happy with the end result. I also added a bit more information to the loan summary screen so the player knows the start and end dates for their loans, and added support for translations to all the text fields. Alongside all that, I also finished up two other machines. The combiner takes two input streams and combines them into a single output. The edge saw is another type of saw which rather than cutting in half, trims an inch off either the width or thickness dimension. This combined with the basic saw allowed you to create any dimension of lumber you want. So pretty major progress in this devlog. Splitter, combiner, switcher, debarker, basic saw and edge saw all implemented. An entirely new and improved conveyor belt system and an updated loans interface. If there are any machines you'd like to see in the game or features for the factory system, I'd love to hear them. So either leave a comment or drop the suggestion on Discord. If this seems like the kind of game you'd like to play or you'd like to support the channel, make sure to wishlist Lumber Mill on Steam at the link in the description. Wishlists help me out a lot and they mean you'll get notified when the game comes out or goes on sale. Special thanks for this video go to my patrons as always and in particular I'd like to thank WarnerM14, Ojo Marin, Hayden, HPR, Chris Naismith, BD Smith, Pepper Trollman, Mike James, Dominic, TV, Lego Nerd and Kleb. That's all for this video, if you liked it remember to subscribe and I shall see you here next time. Thanks for watching.